All right, Supreme Court Justices, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Antonin Scalia did not agree when it came to the law, but they were great friends off the bench. So they are hanging out together with the upcoming election and politics top of mind. How can we have open discussions without losing friends? Former Marine and author Eric Rittmeyer has some key tips. Eric, it seems like at some point we were able to have a conversation with people face to face and share our beliefs and then go upon our happy, merry way. What happened? That's a good question, Deborah. I wish I knew. I tell you, back in the day, we used to be able to have opposing points of view about anything. I, I, I wish we could go back to arguing about football and baseball. It's just we, we become the society now that's just, you know, we're incapable of hearing things we don't like. We're just fueled in emotion. It's very polarizing right now. We have to get back to being better listeners because that's ultimately what people want. We don't have to agree with them. We just need to make them feel like we're listening to their point of view. Yeah, it seems like we went from sharing our point of view to having to win over recruits. People feel like they have to win. All right, you say mentally tough people have mastered the ability to suspend disbeliefs. What does that mean? Yeah, we all have these beliefs. We all have things that are very near and dear to our hearts. And, and the issue is a lot of these beliefs aren't really rooted in anything factual. It might, it might just be a feel good, something that we just feel wonderful about. When somebody has an opposing point of view or they have a different belief system, we have to learn how to set our beliefs aside. It's called compartmentalization. We have to be able to compartmentalize our emotions and say, okay, I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to hear you out. Ultimately, I might not agree with you. I might say, hey, you know what? I still think you're crazy, but at least I'm going to hear you out. We have to set aside our beliefs to hear what other people think. Also, you can have a spirited conversation without losing the spirit of the conversation, and that spirit is to communicate with one another. All right, knowing people's triggers. This is a big one because sometimes you can say something to somebody and you don't understand their reaction and and you may have said something as simple as oh you're wearing that shirt and what they hear is you're so stupid you can't even dress yourself <laughs> did my kids put you up to that did they tell you to say that to me darn it my shirt my marine corps shirt you know what's, <laughs> well, that, as, that, as, you know as an air force brat I, I really wasn't talking about your shirt i appreciate any any branch of service <laughs> You and I both, you all bleed green, right? No, it's, it's, the, it's the preparing, so keeping the military in mind. You know, we prepare for these things. We constantly put ourselves in situations, so when something does come up, our brain's already systematically desensitized to it. We have to be aware of our triggers and prepare for them. So when somebody says something we don't like or we disagree with, we need to know that what's going to follow that is going to be an emotion-based reaction. If we're able to be aware of it up front, we can now process that information logically and respond accordingly, as opposed to a knee-jerk you said something that upset me. It's all about being prepared. It's funny because sometimes you'll you'll listen to like family members, for example, and it's like you're acting like a defense attorney and the prosecutor <laughs> at the same time, and neither one of you are lawyers, really. Um, okay. The other thing, there's like a, a little side trick I use is you know oftentimes we get into these teams and we don't even know why we really belong to certain teams. Let's, I'm just gonna take for example Democrats versus Republicans. Instead of saying that, you could say, you know, I just really feel like we should be good stewards of our tax dollars and at the same time really invest in programs that really impact people's lives for the better. Nobody can argue with that. Now it's not a team. That was pretty intense. I like that. I'm going to have to script that one. Yeah, you know, and that is what it all boils down to because, again, we're, just, we're at this time right now where everybody feels like they have to have the one-up. It's like that game you used to play with your hands. Everybody's like, you go here, I go there, you go here, you go there. It's like it's never ending. It's just perpetual. We just have to get much, much better at listening. We listen with the intent to reply. We're not listening with the intent to understand. That translates into people feeling like they're not being heard, which is going to create static every time. Yeah, and I'm a dovetail on that. You also say take time to respond rather than to react, which means you have to listen. You do have to listen because when we respond, that means we have time to formulate something that, again, is tied to fact, is tied to logic. When we have an emotion-based response, 99% of the time, we're going to say something we wish we didn't say. If we're not prepared for those triggers, somebody says it, we go off, whatever follows that is just going to be bibble bobble. That's all it's going to be. We're emotionally fueled. We're drunk in emotion. We're incapable of logical thought. Then we sober up a couple hours later and we're like – why did I say that? Now we just lost a relationship. We lost a friendship. And it's like, why did I do that? Because you were drunk in emotion. Yeah. Don't allow your, uh, your emotions to be hijacked. And it seems like today, not only emotions, but we've seen causes get hijacked. 
We sure have. And and our, our feelings are the only thing we have 100% control over that, bro. We can't, we can't control what happens to us on the exterior. What we do have total control over is how we respond to those things. It's really one of the only things that we can truly say is mine. So when somebody says something or does something, we can't allow them to overtake our emotional state of mind. If we do, they've won. So if we say, you know what, internally, we're like, I'm not going to be hijacked. I'm going to keep control of my emotions. What you say is great, but it's almost kind of like what you say bounces off me and sticks back on you. Remember that, like that glue thing? Yeah, stick yeah. with that. <laughs> All right, with that said, um, your book is The Emotional Marine. What's behind the title? It's all about likability and connecting. And when I wrote this book back in September, it was just all about getting people to go back to loving each other again. It was before all this went down. It was like a kuna matata. These are just simple skills that nobody does anymore. It's just showing people basic respect, making them laugh, earning their trust, making them feel important. My book is all about connecting, and it couldn't come at a better time because our nation right now is incapable of connecting. I'm hoping this solves that problem. Yeah, bring back the civics classes. Okay, your <laughs> online program, Overcoming Obstacles, what's involved in that? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an awesome online program. Thank you for that, Deborah. I'm actually offering it to all your viewers. It's on my website. I'm giving it away totally for free for your viewers. It's on mentaltoughnessspeaker.com. They can put the code in Houston. They'll get it totally for free. It's just an online program to help people overcome things that are put in their way. We're all dealing with lots of obstacles right now. Everybody could use some pointers for how to overcome them. Thank you, Eric. Deborah, it's great seeing you. Hoorah, hoorah, semper <laughs> five. <laughs> If you can't talk about politics politely, change gears, talk about the weather, but then of course you might get somebody who says, I like hot weather. No, cold weather's better. No, hot weather's better. All right, just change gears. Just keep changing gears. We have a link on our site, greatdayhouston.com, if you'd like to order Eric's book. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We hope you have a great day.